Hello, how's it going everybody? Ronan Boyce here, the Irish City Football Club and subscribe to Irish Footy Vlogs for the best League of Ireland content around. Alright lads, uh, just a quick reaction to the game last night from Dangley Mount. It finished Bohemians 3, Shamrock Rovers 1. Not the best game of football in terms of excitement and actual quality of football. Uh, first 25 minutes I suppose if you're a neutral probably didn't enjoy it that much not on long balls a uh, couple of decent challenges going in particularly uh, Bucko and Conor Livingston in the middle of the Bowles Park uh, in the middle of the park for Bowles about them were unbelievable but must have had 7 or 8 ball recoveries each um, Bowles took the lead in about the 30th minute, uh, Coop put the ball into the box from a free kick and it was put in by Lee Grace, chested it into his own net. Rovers then quickly made it 1-1. Uh, Aaron Green skipped down the right-hand side, pulled the back to Watts and he put the ball into the box. And the man who shall not be named uh, stuck it away with his head. Uh, the same man then ran over and taunted the Bowes fans, which I think is the most Rovers thing ever. You know, score a goal, go over, taunt the fans and taunt the Bowles fans. And then Bowles swiftly responded through promo Neil uh, He rounded the knee on Paul, so it was shocking all night. And uh, made it 2-1. And we quickly hit them with a, four, with a tour then through uh, Rob Rockstar Cornwall. Ball fell to him on the edge of the box and he just smashed it home. Uh, not the edge of the box, sorry, about 12 yards out, just smashed it home. Great finish, and that was the way it ended. Three one the balls. Uh, controversial incident of the game was obviously with the two managers about being sent off. Uh, I think it's just typical Stephen Bradley, isn't it? Like he's uh, tried to make something of it. Apparently, from what I've heard, he had a go at Mono, which gee, I don't know how anyone could have a go at Mono. Um, and then Nono reacted, and apparently, it all kicked off from there. So I'm not get obviously a great result. Shame there was no Rovers fans there to be honest with you because I would have really enjoyed, you know, when the goals are going in. It was just you know, when things are happening on the pitch, normally you turn you give the finger to the Rovers fans, but that was it was just a bit weird last night. Didn't matter that we won the game. We got the three points, we're still fourth. Uh, no worries about them all catching us at this stage. Derry, it's all the play for in Snowgo, isn't it? Hopefully you get a great crowd down there, uh, a couple of buses running, I don't know if you are getting the train as well. Hopefully we'll have a huge crowd down there, Snowy have promised us that as many as go down we'll get in. So yeah, that was how uh, that was how last night went, overall an unbelievable night for Bowes fans. Not the best for Rovers and probably not the best for Neutron either, but we don't care, we got the three points. And Dublin is still red and black for the third time this season. Cheers lads. Hey lads, um, Philly here, just after the um, Shamrock Rovers Bohemians came, obviously Bowles are now 3 1 winners in the night. Um, look, disappointing of course, but uh, look, these things happen. Um, do I think Bowles deserve to win in the night? Yes. Um, do I think Rovers could have played better? Yes. Uh, was it a strong Rovers side? No. Um, could say the same for Bowles as well. But uh, look, obviously a lot of things happened in the game, but at the end of the day, it's a diary and you want to win it, but we didn't win it. Um, yeah, it's just a sense of disappointment, to be honest with you. Uh, on the night, like, you know yourself, Friday night, football, you want to win for and have a good weekend. But um, do you know something? It's, th these things happen. You know what I mean? You can win derbies, you can lose derbies. We lost, but over the course of the season, we have been by far and away the best side this country has seen. Um, one of the commentators at the game, there, on the game there for Watch LOI tonight, said uh, Dublin is red and black tonight. But um, just to put into perspective, Ireland is green and white for the next 12 months. So, although it's bitter tonight, um, I think there's quite a lot of satisfaction amongst Rovers fans that we've done enough. Um, they might have won the battle, but we won the war. So, look, it is what it is. 
Um, good to see some young lads getting an opportunity as well, which was great. But uh, Stephen Bradley, it's happened again. They're not wrong. Two in a row. Get it up, baby. <laughs> Good night and God bless. Cannot wait for that party next week in Tala Stadium. Roll on. Come on, the hoops. So it's finished here. The brand, Ryan McBray, Brandeville Stadium, Derry City 2, Sligo Rovers no. Um, Derry City came out the blocks right from a kickoff. Almost took a lead through Wolf, uh, Wolf Fitzgerald after a great play from Jamie McGonagall. First half was end to end. Um, both keepers, both teams having chances. Um, Derry took a lead through Jamie McGonagall when he turned home across. Gertzide had to make three, four great saves to keep Derry in the league going under half time. Um, there was a great chance for McGonagall at the end as he went through one on one with Richard Brush as his lob over the keeper was cleared off the line. Second half, Sligo started the better, had the better chances um, without really testing Gertzeit. Um, Figuera, who was instrumental all night against his former club, was excellent for them throughout the game. Um, but Derry got the second goal that they needed. When Wolf, when, Wolf Fitz, when Wolf Fitzgerald burst down the right-hand side, put a cross in the box, it was cleared the McGonagall in the box and his folly flew past Richard Brush. Um, the game petered out after that as both teams kept possession, trying to just as the game feet, uh, came to an end. Um, for Derry, one last push now next week against Dundalk as they try and overtake Bohemians for that fourth place after results after results tonight. Whatever the outcome of next week, um, it's been a, a good season after the first six games. So um, we. They the won the first six games with only two points and four defeats. If we end up finishing fifth, that would be an amazing season. Um, but as for the Ryan McBride brand, we'll stay in the season. We're out of here. Goodbye. So it's the morning after Sligo Rovers beat Derry City away. Um, I was fortunate to make the trip up to Derry. A uh, good few from Sligo went up, which is great to see. The away end was nearly packed out. Uh, great atmosphere from the away fans. Kind uh, of, kind of going on 90 minutes, even when they're one or two nil down. It kind of felt like a night of celebrations after qualifying for Europe last week. Um, but overall, I think the performance wasn't good enough. I thought Derry controlled the game from start to finish. Uh, exploited us quite well. Um, I thought we looked very vulnerable at the back, and that's not something you say often. Um, I thought, especially for their second goal, I think it was poor defending, poor clearance from Gary Buckley. I'm not it was a great finish. Can't deny that. Uh, but I think Derry exploited us quite well, and we looked very vulnerable. Um, I say this quite often. When Sligo Rovers don't have Greg Bulger in the midfield, you, you miss his absence. I think the midfield battles was lost tonight. You know, we had nine more in there and McDonald as well. I'm a big fan of McDonald and McMahon Morton, but I just don't think uh, they took the game by the scuff of the neck and you need that type of player in Bulger to do that for us. Uh, oh, bright performances though, I thought Mark Byrne played very well, especially in the first half. I thought he played quite well. Walter Figuera as well, playing against his former club. Um, he did a very bright performance. I looked enough to get the goal in the first half. Uh, when we had the ball, we looked dangerous going forward to a certain extent. We had chances, but they weren't just kind of... They were kind of more half chances than anything. I don't think Derry ever looked like they were going to concede, to be honest. Um, and the second half started, I thought they were in control of the game, controlled possession. And look, they, they deserved their lead in the end. Um, it was a nice away trip to get down to, though. Um, it's nice to get European football as well. It's a bit of a relief after kind of, uh, I wouldn't call it really a stub, just really bad form. I think it kind of got to the stage where he had two wins in 15. Um, and look, uh, Europe, Europe was looking far beyond what we could have achieved. But look, we did it at the end of the day, typical Rovers fashion to make it hard work. But we've done it. Um, that was the last away trip of the season. Now we look forward to our final go home game against Bowles and hopefully we can get the win. How's it going guys? Uh, just jumping on quickly to give my after match reaction to um, St. Patrick's Athletic versus Finn Harps that happened last night in the in the league. It was uh, an interesting first half I have to say. Not so interesting second half anyway. But uh, all four goals came in the first half. Um, I thought the game might have ended, you know, 4-3 or 3-2 or some mad scoreline uh, going off the first half. But it sort of calmed down then, but anyway, the game started at a crazy pace. Um, it really was mad. Um, Pats were probably on the front foot in the first 20 minutes, and suddenly they found themselves, you know, at 1-0 up. Um, 
a ball outright. I think it was Jamie Lennon who spared a pass outright uh, to what would have been Sam Bone, who then fizzed it across uh, to Dara Burns, who then fizzed it across to uh, Billy King, who was waiting at the front post to tap it in. It was a real poacher goal. It was a, you wouldn't expect it from Billy King, but um, yeah, definitely an instrumental goal in the game. And I probably think uh, it was integral then for Harps to score straight after, because you know, with Harps being so good defensively and you know, sometimes lacking the killer edge, they need to score right after, or else they maybe sit deep and you can't really see them scoring. But um, Sean Boyd, brilliant free kick. I'm not sure if it went through the wall or um, what the angle was like, but. Either way, you know, brilliant free kick from Sean Boyd, who was very good throughout the whole game. I think a lot of people were probably scratching their head as to why Tunde Olavi wasn't playing. Uh, but Sean Boyd definitely staked his claim, you know, put in a proper shift, was a handful for all the defenders and ended up getting two goals in the night and was probably my man of the match, to be honest. Um, but yeah, Finn Harps, I think overall, would be actually kicking themselves out. Uh, they didn't get a win out of the game. Pats were there for the taking. Um, Let's be real, Pats have one eye on the cup final. But, you know, with it being such an important game for Finn Harps, there was maybe another gear that they could have went to or another goal that, I don't know. They seemed happy with the point, don't get me wrong. And, you know, I would be too. But, um, yeah, uh, uh, you never know. Maybe at the end of the season they'll be regretting not putting that extra man forward in the last five minutes or whatever because Pats really weren't um, on their night last night and Finn Harps definitely were. But uh, all in all, you know, Finn Harps have a huge game now against Longford next week. Uh, Pats play Finn Harps' rival in, uh, in staying out of the drop zone as they play Waterford and the RSC. Two interesting games. Um, I can't wait to watch both of them, to be honest. Thanks, guys. Full time in NC Core. 2-2 two, two, uh, in Pats and Harps. Um, not the worst result in the, in the world for Harps, although you know a win would have been would have been really good. Um, it's just really a matter of how Waterford get on now. Um, it's kind of out of our hands at this stage. Um, obviously Waterford play Longford. I expect them to, to, to win in that match. And then kind of buzz down to the last match where Waterford are playing, Har- Waterford are playing St. Pat's and Harps are playing Longford. Um, all Harps can really do is, is win their match against Longford and hope that St. Pat's hold uh, Waterford to a draw in, 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 uh, in the RSC. So, yeah, um, overall, you know, but a, a very entertaining the first 22 minutes or whatever it was. Um, obviously, St. Pat's, you know, got the lead 15 minutes, ball from the right hand side, and uh, Billy King done very well to get in between two Pat's defenders and it's not a pass McGinley's uh, right hand side. Um, so yeah, obviously, Pat's won up. Um, it wasn't it wasn't a good start for Harps. Let's be real. Uh, but they done well to come back and they equalised a uh, Sean Boyd free kick just a few moments after. The ball straight through the wall. Josh Keeley wasn't happy at all. And yeah, then Harps, you know, it was it was good to, good to get back on on equal terms. And yeah, Harps went ahead and and, and you know took took the lead in the match. Um, a ball from Barry McNamee, great ball, right in the money and. Uh, Sean Boyd was there in the box to head home to make it 2-1 to Harps. Then, uh, Pats came back and, yeah, about three minutes later, they, it was, a, it was, you know, they, they got the equaliser. Great ball over the top. I can't actually remember who it was, um, but it was Dara Burns who got on the end of it. It was a great run from Dara Burns. Um, he looked, up, he looked offside, uh, but on, you know, on further, Further looking at it, he was on side. It was a two or three yards. So he was keeping him on. Um, so yeah, he was he, he got in anyway. It was two two. And it kind of you know it was a bit like a damn squid after that. Um, you know the game died down a bit, and yeah, you know both teams kind of had chances in the second half. Siddiqui was booked for you know a kind of charge on Josh Keeley. Uh, he got a yellow. Sean Boyd was on the book. There was a you know a good few challenges coming in. Um, Harps had a few chances. Uh, you know where they uh, you know a, a ball was blocked off the line, and they also defended their own as well. Ethan Boyd had a header off the line, and uh, David Webster and so on. But uh, yeah, Siriki a bit of moment of stupid stupidity really on uh, eighty two minutes. Uh, gave away the free kick. Referee was, you know, I'd say the referee was going to give him the benefit of the doubt. 
But Siddiqui, what does he do? He just kicks the ball at the Pats man who's on the ground. Like, just complete, utter stupidity. I was sitting there pulling my hair out. I was so angry. Like, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't understand it. So that's him out of the next match. Um, and if we avoid the playoff, you know, he may be back for the playoff. But still very disappointed in him. You know, left Harpson up till challenge. But yeah, that's about it. Um, we move on to the next match against Longford. Um, we hope we can just do the best. And we hope that Pats will do us a favour and get a draw against Waterford. But up the harps. <laughs>